world shape? What is the best way to do it? And also, in what way can you still maintain that feminine look? So I'm gonna go through the top three things that help me build my shape. Good morning, guys. I'm not really sure what my makeup's looking like because I'm looking at the camera. So probably not the best way of doing makeup, guys, but you know I'm not really a professional when it comes to makeup. Muscle bellies are a bit more full. I have just been eating more and really trying. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm still doing my conditioning once a week. So I probably will do a mini cut just before my wedding. Um, but until then, we're just gonna grow. We're just gonna keep getting stronger. I'm gonna go to the gym, so I'm gonna take you along with you and give you some more updates later. Also, I stopped taking creatine um, for like a month or two. Again, not like necessarily meaning to, I just honestly am rubbish at taking like tablets, supplements, things like that. So I actually just realized that I hadn't taken it for like all of September. Um, so I don't know whether or not that has made a difference or not. It's been hard to know because my training had been really inconsistent in September anyway. So I'm just back to taking it five grams a day. It doesn't really matter what one you use. I personally just use this one um, from my protein, but any creatine monohydrate, five grams every day. Um, and we're gonna see if that makes a difference to my strength. So it's all just gonna help like my power, my output. Um, my performance more than anything, my good old Vimto, because I just am not a massive lover of water, you guys know that. Unless I'm on holiday and it's really hot, that's the one time I'll probably drink water. They're going to take you along to the gym now, so let's go. So I'm take you along my pool day. This is a back day. I like to do deadlifts and start with the heavy compounds at the start. Now, don't judge. I'm using knee sleeves on my shins because I do scrape my the bar across my shins and it grazes me. So I'm trying to just protect them. Um, I do really like doing deadlifts at the start and then I'm going on to my weighted pull-ups. I'm always starting with my hardest exercises. Um, so we're going on to max reps here. Now, when I say max reps, I'm still trying to aim for eight to ten reps so i'm doing max reps weighted and then i'm dropping i'm doing a drop set dropping the weight and going max reps body weight now you can do this even on the assisted machine if you can't do pull-ups yet you can still do the same exercise just on the assisted machine so going on to tricep dips again trying to do at least eight to ten rep range here with the 5 kg and i actually did end up doing a drop set i'm not sure if i filmed this one but i did do a drop set on this and then went on to doing some biceps i only have two bicep exercises in my pool day that's all you need. Remember your biceps, there's two muscles of your biceps. So I like to do this variation. Looking on hindsight, I should have put the seat back 45 degrees. So it should have been on a slight decline. Um, I was way too upright here. But trying to keep your elbows still, trying to not let your those swing. And then doing the hammer curl is the second variation I like to do. And I do like to do a single arm because I like to really, really focus on this. Um, and holding myself down onto the bench to try and keep myself from moving and stay as upright as possible. So just remember not to pull your elbow away from your body and keep that close to your ribs when you're doing this. But these are my favorite bicep variations. Sometimes I use cables, but today I really wanted to use some by, um, dumbbells for my workout. So going on to the low row, again, you want to use straps here, guys, because you want to go until mechanical failure, not when your grip goes, which when you go heavy, when you are lifting heavy, which you should do, then you are going to find your grip fatigues, your forearm hurts before your actual back muscle fatigue. So making sure I'm really, really getting a full stretch here, coming all the way back, elbow tucked in, elbow to pocket. And that was my whole workout. That is a wrap. I well and truly messed up, guys. I went into the gym hungry. And it was my own fault because I started training at half 11, which is basically like near lunchtime, or I should have had a snack. So I actually ended up having breakfast at like half eight. And to be honest, I just didn't even think about it. Like I just, food was not on my mind this morning. And then I got to the gym and thought, crap, I haven't even had my pre-workout snack. So I hadn't really eaten for a couple of hours and I had my coffee so long ago. So I kind of like messed up my timing today, but I'm still happy with that session. I'm gonna go home and make some food for lunch. When I say make food, I've already got food, just reheat some chili from last night. Um, and then I need to start packing for Venice um, and sorting out the house before we go. So lesson learned for me is just make sure I have some emergency snacks um in my car or just like i just need to plan this a little bit better i just really didn't plan guys failing to plan is planning to fail you guys know that i always say that right feed me up baby i am starving marvin oh i'll tell you what i'm gonna have so i got my chili 
leftovers from dinner. It's actually really dark, let's give you some light. But my leftovers chili from last night. And then I'm a bit spoiled. I've got sweet potato or a rice option. Um, I don't know, I'll see how much sweet potato I've got because I'm so hungry. I'm feeling like I might need a bit of both, but we're gonna see. So these, these are the sweet potatoes. I am gonna have both actually. That might be enough. I might not need the rice, but let's just see how we go. Um, I am gonna take the skin off. So my sweet potatoes, I've got two, probably say medium sized sweet potatoes because your girl is hungry. And then I'm gonna chuck the chili on top. I'm gonna add the cheese last. Beautiful, I mean, my food never looks that stunning. But I promise you, it tastes pretty damn good. We have also got a dog behaviorist in. Um, he looks very innocent and cute. Milo's going to stay with a dog minder whilst we are away for a couple of days. burritos on my taco burrito although i've lost half of it out the bottom we're up it's been seven days now since i've trained i had the flu in venice i was pretty ill not gonna go into details but i had the stomach flu so you can imagine it was pretty rough time um and i haven't trained for seven days now so i'm feeling like an absolute shriveled prune <laughs> literally i know my body probably doesn't look any different but I just feel like a bit of a shriveled prune, you know, like my muscles are not full right now. I feel pretty rubbish from obviously being ill. So I just back to it. I feel like I'm back to basics today. But you know what? We're going to have a good session. It's a Friday and I'm going to go smash it out. And then it's Halloween weekend. So I've got some fun things planned this weekend. The video you just saw was before I went away. That was my last training session. So this is my first push day back in seven days since being ill. Oh my goodness, was this a struggle. So I actually started off with my max rep push-ups. Now, I definitely didn't do anywhere near what I usually do, but it was still a good start. Um, so go in as many as you can until you literally cannot lift yourself up, basically flopping on the floor. And then what I went on to doing was my dumbbell shoulder press. So went on to doing eight to 10 reps now. The way I'm using here normally is easy for 10 and I was almost going up to the next dumbbells. However, today I struggled to even complete eight reps and it goes like that sometimes guys. So you have those days where you can see I'm still going RPE nine to 10 here, like where I literally don't have any left in the tank. In fact, I'll probably say this is an RPE 10 because I couldn't even lift up <laughs> another rep. Um, so I was going until failure and then I was actually doing a dumbbell side raise superset trying to aim for about 10 reps um, and again you don't need to be heavy I like to do this seated because it means I can't swing when I'm standing it's very easy to swing them up and you want to make sure that your elbow isn't dipping down you want to keep that nice and high when you're doing these so that was a really good superset dumbbell press with my side raises going on to the tricep extension now I feel a really good connection from this one so I like to go across the body and um, just using literally the cable no handles or anything and just making sure I'm trying to keep my elbow close to my body without coming away from it and again they will move a little bit so that was it just did that little super set and then handstand push-ups but I really couldn't do any more I was very fatigued by this point so I didn't end up doing very many of these I am back to be honest I was pretty weak um but that's has to be expected because I haven't trained in seven days and I have been sick, so I'm not too mad about it. It was a bit disheartening <laughs> when I was trying to lift up the weights and they just they just weren't going up. I just couldn't do the same, I did the same weights, but I couldn't do the same rep range that I could do like a week ago. But give me a week, give me a couple of days. Strength will be back again in no time, I'm sure. So I'm literally just gonna have a really quick snack, which you guys know is my protein cookie. 
not protein cookie, oat and PB cookie, there's actually no protein in here. And then I'm just going to go and walk Milo quickly and then I'm not going to have a post-workout meal because I'm going to have dinner. So it is, what is the time? 20 to 6. So I'm actually going to go walk Milo quickly now because it's getting really dark. And then I will show you what I have for dinner. The best part is I actually froze my spinach. So I've got just put on a holiday I bought a whole bag of spinach I chucked the whole thing in the freezer and it literally like whittles down into like tiny little bits so I'm just gonna add some spinach don't tell Danny because he's gonna absolutely hate me for putting spinach in here but we're just gonna make it a little bit healthier um, and we're gonna add in a little scoop and then what I'm gonna do is make it a little bit creamier I've got the Philadelphia light and then another little top tip that I do to my pastas, if you need more protein, add in make your sauce. Makes it really, really cheesy and creamy. I also have cheese to add to this, I forgot to say, which again is another like 10 grams protein. Like this meal has actually got a lot of protein in it to be fair. That is the finished product. I'm going to put on screen how long it actually took me because I timed it to show you how easy it is. This can be, obviously this is my dinner, but this can even be done as a meal prep. Divide it into however many portions you need or want for the week. And it's so simple, like simple ingredients, doesn't need to be complicated. I'm going to go through the top three things that help me build my shape. So since I always get asked about how to build shape, what is the best way to do it? And also, in what way can you still maintain that feminine look? Because I know lots of women get really worried about looking big and bulky and really do avoid that weight area. But if you want to build a little bit more shape and you don't just want to be skinny, then it is going to take a little bit of strategic planning and also make sure that everything is in place, diet and training. Um, now now, I would say the number one thing, and I have made some notes because it's helped me, me along my way. You guys know all I knew how to do was run. Everything else in the gym was completely new to me, and I was a beginner once too. So if I can help you build shape and help you tone and define your body a little bit more with the methods that I've used... I've used it on hundreds of women as well and it will help you but you just have to trust the process. The hardest thing is you don't, you put in the work, you don't see the results next week, next month. The hardest thing with building shape I think for a lot of women is unlike fat loss that you know you can see quite significant changes within about 8-12 weeks, building muscle and building shape and trying to change your body shape is not a quick fix and it's not something that happens like that. And that was the biggest lesson I think for me and my journey is understanding that it took time and I just had to be patient. I just had to trust the process, knowing what, what I was doing was the right thing, the right exercises, the right nutritional strategy, and I did everything that I could to make that a priority. I'm gonna go through the top three things that helped me build my shape in the hope that it will help you along your journey and they're things that you can take away and do for yourself. So the number one thing I've wrote down here is nutrition. So I think in my past, like, I was definitely in a deficit all the time, 24-7, and I definitely found it really, really hard to see any significant changes. And I see a lot of women have this, is they lose the body fat because they're in a calorie deficit, right? They're eating less calories than they are burning. So they're burning more calories than they're eating, basically. So that is the calorie deficit. Now, that's great. It serves a purpose. And it's good to have a good base to drop your body fat percentage down. However, the mistake people make is they stay there, they plateau, they don't know what to do next. So if you want to build shape, and this is what I learned the hard way, you're going to have to eat a little bit more. You're going to have to eat at least your maintenance, if not a small surplus, and spend a bit of time there. It might be slightly uncomfortable, not in the fact that you're going to balloon and get fat. That's not how you build muscle, build shape. But it's more a case of you're no longer seeing the scales go down. I think it's mentally hard in the fact that your clothes maybe feel slightly tighter whilst you're building a little bit of lean muscle tissue. And you don't necessarily see the muscle you're building because you do as expected, carry slightly more body fat than when you're in a calorie deficit. So a lot of it, I would say, is probably mental more than anything when you're trying to build a little bit of muscle because you're going by more performance factors. So you're going by more sort of, are you getting stronger? 
um, you know, your quality of life as well obviously improves because you're not hungry and your measurements obviously will be changing. However, not at such a rapid rate as a calorie deficit. So bear that in mind when you're building muscle and transitioning. If you're doing that this winter and you want to build a little bit of muscle to change your body shape and you want your figure and shape to change, you're going to have to spend a bit of time at at least maintenance, which is a really good time of year to do that now. That's what I tend to do year round, is spend a bit of time at maintenance, if not a small surplus. And when I say small, there's only a certain amount of muscle you can build in a certain amount of time. So you don't need to go on this massive bulk. There's the mistake lots of people make is they have this, you know, I'm going to have a cheat day, I'm going to have this, going to have that. The problem is you, yes, build muscle, but you also gain a ton of body fat along the way too. And I think that's the biggest mistake I made. I used to have all these cheat days. I definitely put, put on too much body fat and at the rate of my muscle growth, which was obviously not drastically rapid, as women we don't have that much testosterone, so it's not really going to be a massive overnight change, I put on too much body fat, and lots of women will do this, so it's good to be obviously tracking calories, to know that your intake is the right amount. Um, it also is really, really good to obviously have your plan so you can measure your numbers. Now, you're not looking for your scales to drop anymore when you're building shape, but you do want to be looking at your progress. So you do want to be looking at your lifts. You want to be looking at your training and say, you know, when is it time to go up? You know, am I pushing myself enough? Am I progressively overloading or am I plateauing in a certain area? So you can also cater what you want to shape and build more. You have to remember that your training program should be more individualized to what area you want to focus on. So for me, it was always my glutes, the kind of pancake bum. So for me, it was like, I wanted the sculpted arms and shoulders and things. So I made my programming based around that. And I was targeting those muscle groups at least twice a week in order to effectively progressively overload and obviously build the muscle tissue in a short amount of time. Now there's a fine line of how much to do, obviously you can't be training legs four times a week and be expecting them to grow quicker or doing your bum days every day and expect that to grow quicker. It doesn't work like that. You need to also rest just as much as you're performing and you're training, you need to also prioritize your rest. So that brings me on to number two, which is sleep, rest and recovery. Now, when you are trying to build muscle tissue and you are trying to still obviously stay leaner at the same time, I know that you don't wanna be massively bulky. I get that as a woman from myself too. I also don't wanna feel that way either, but I still do prioritize rest, sleep and recovery. So just as much as I'm training really hard, I also understand that when I'm in the gym, I'm tearing down my muscle fibers, weight training, and so are you. But when you come home, how you're resting, your nutrition, your sleep, your recovery, your stress levels, all of those things play a massive role into your recovery. So how quickly can you recover so you can then give that same high intensity to your next training session? So I think sleep, rest and recovery is one thing that's massively overlooked. I literally prioritise every single night, I'm going to sound like grandma, but I have eight hours sleep without fail. Without fail do I have eight hours sleep and that's because I know that that's optimal for me to then recover so I can then give more and have more energy to give for the rest of my training week and also then to recover, repair, grow. You're not growing and repairing when you're training, you're tearing muscle fibres down when you're weight training. So when you're home and you're resting and that's another thing with steps, making sure that you aren't then pushing yourself out of your maintenance because you're doing so much cardio and so many steps without realizing it you might think you're eating at say maintenance which is optimal for building muscle or a small surplus however what you probably are doing is doing way too much cardio way too many steps and then you're actually pushing yourself into a calorie deficit so you have to be very careful that i guess you're kind of tracking everything your sleep your steps your cardio your training just to make sure that then your calorie intake is right and then obviously that's what's going to be optimal for your goal um, of building a little bit of shape. Now fat loss we can kind of get as women anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks is like a really good amount of fat loss. Obviously depending on your starting point, it's very subjective depending on your starting point. And understanding that it's not going to happen in 12 weeks like you expect. It has taken me years and years and years to get to the point where I am now. And every single year that goes by, 
I just have a slightly more sculpted physique at a slightly higher body fat percentage because I've built up more, so it's popping more. So even at a higher body fat percentage, my muscle now will pop. And that's just because I've spent years rinsing and repeating, going in, going out. And I'm not saying it's going to take you years to get to where you want to be, but just know that it takes at least a good dedicated, hard, and I'm talking like a good, solid, consistent block of training, a good nine months. Like, dedicate a good nine to 12 months to building muscle tissue, at least when you start, because the mistake I made was I didn't have any shape naturally. Well, we none of us do, right? We don't, we're not born with muscle. So I was keep losing body fat, keep losing body fat. A lot of women do this. You look skinny. You don't look shapely. You don't have curves. You don't have a nice curvy bum, you don't have a, a tiny little waist because you built up your shoulders and your back muscles, you don't have that defined look that you want or you think that you're going to get because you're just dieting all the time, you don't have the muscle. So dedicate a good 9 to 12 months, if I'm being completely realistic, to building muscle and then maybe you can do a mini cut if you want to for like a holiday or an occasion to see the muscle you built but it's going to take multiple cycles of building that um, muscle to get to where you want to be. So that's just time. You can't fast forward that. I'm not going to look bulky and big, so please don't worry about that because it just doesn't happen. Unless your diet is shocking and you're in a massive surplus, then yes, you are going to be gaining lots of body fat excessively and that will make you look bulky. So you have to remember it's a lot to do with diet just as much as it is to do with training. If you are doing the same weights. Like, yes, you're doing the same training over and over again, great, until you're ready to then progress up. Now, what I see of a lot of women is they're going in and they're picking up the same weights or they're doing home workouts and they have the same dumbbells, the two and a halves, but they're using the two and a halves for their arms and their legs. However, your legs are a heck of a lot stronger than you think. They're a heck of a lot stronger than your upper body. So you almost hold yourself back for the same amount of time that you have to do your workout it's just not intense enough. It's just not challenging enough. And you have to get to the point where you say, okay, RPE is rate of perceived exertion. It goes from one to 10. 10 being the hardest. I basically don't have any reps in reserve, so I couldn't probably push out another one. And one being, this is really easy, I could go for loads, right? You wanna be at at least RPE, eight to 10, with at least one to two max reps left in the tank on every exercise. If you're going and doing, say, I don't know, an example, like 12 kg squats, okay? For you, you can probably do that with your upper body, then you're trying to do it with your legs. Your legs can load and take a lot more weight than your upper body can, because it's a bigger, stronger muscle, especially our glutes, they are massive, strong muscle. So you hold yourself back actually from building shape and from your body shape changing the results you're not seeing, you're not seeing results because the weight you're lifting is not challenging enough. You're not working hard enough or intense enough. And it sounds brutal, but I'm just gonna be completely honest because I used to go in, tick the box and just train, you know, just do the training, go through the motions. When I started to understand a bit more about I could actually do more, a lot of it's also confidence, self-belief, going actually, have I tried a little two and a half more? Have I tried the heavier dumbbells? Or have I just gone up to the leg press and put on the same weight I've been putting on for like months and months and months? Have I actually tried to go up? Because that is progressively overloaded. It's not always weight, sometimes it's reps. But if you're doing an exercise and you think you've got more than two reps left in the tank and you are done, then you aren't working hard enough. And honestly, that's the biggest, biggest, biggest thing that people don't realize is you're standing in your own way of getting to where you wanna be because you just need to give a little bit more belief in yourself, a little bit more effort to say, I can do this, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try. You don't know till you try. I fail all the time. You saw in my workouts, my last reps are hard. I almost struggle to get the dumbbell up. I probably have an RPE of nine to 10 out of 10 when I when I train. And that's because I know for the same time I'm going in and I'm investing this time into my gym session, I'm not gonna go in and half ass it. I'm not gonna go in and just lift lightweight. I'm gonna go in and train hard because I know the results I'm gonna get from that 
are going to be insane and I can't see them yet and, and you can't see them and that's the hardest thing you don't go training and say oh look I look really good now but I've just known over the years what it's like to train hard and the results I get are so worth putting in that effort so even on days I don't feel like it because yes I'm human too I don't feel like it just put in a little bit more training intensity just put in a little bit more hard work and give yourself that can-do attitude which again takes time you have to almost retrain the brain to say I can if you told yourself for years and years you couldn't do something if you could go in the gym and work 50% you're going to get 50% results if you go in the gym and you give 100% you're going to get 100% of the results that you want so my the thing I always tell myself is I could go in the gym and give 70% effort and what I'm going to see is 70% results of my potential. You get out what you put in. With the gym, it's the fairest place in the world. You can't buy it. The physique that you have, you really can't buy. If you are natural as a female, which most lifestyle people are unless they're competing, we're not talking bodybuilders, we're just talking lifestyle here, if you are somebody who just wants to live a healthy lifestyle, be super fit, super strong and feel good in your clothes and build some shape, you can. But you have to make it a lifestyle. So the gym is in my whole life, but I do prioritise it five hours of my week. I do prioritise it five days of my week. Five days of my week, that is a non-negotiable and is discipline. I'm going to do in a whole nother video about motivation discipline because I know that's probably needed right now this time of year but please know you have to be consistent to get the result you can't go in the gym a couple of days a week and expect like these miracles you do have to stick at it so if you're training three days a week you tell yourself that commit to those three days a week don't go in there for a couple of days and get flaky and spend another month out of the gym and then not go for Christmas and then not show up until January 1st you're wasting all this time and this time is going to go anyway, it's ticking, time is ticking, but you're not anywhere close to where you want to be, you're just stay. You're just stuck here in a plateau, unless you get yourself out of that rut, you find a training method you enjoy, a training method that is feasible with your schedule, so how long do you have in the gym, not everybody has the same amount of time in the gym, and then also the best training method for you, so just start really small, Maybe just focus on building a good routine with your training where you can be consistent, where you can stay in the gym long enough to see the results because a lot of the time people don't see the results that they want and you might not be seeing the results you want just because you haven't given yourself enough time, you haven't been consistent enough, you probably don't know your calorie intake or if you do you might be a little bit flaky with it maybe on weekends guesstimating it and the weekends are a third of your month. So a third of your week, that's the way I look at it. So treat your weekends like your weekdays. And if you can focus on the four things I said, which was having patience, giving yourself time, training, make sure you're progressively overloading, being consistent. And then the last one obviously being nutrition and making sure you're eating at maintenance, if not a small surplus. So my advice would be lose the body fat first get your foundations to a place where your body fat levels are slightly lowered then what you can do as you simultaneously lose body fat you can be building muscle at the same time so decide and dedicate x amount of weeks or months to the deficit lose the body fat then dedicate x amount of months to building muscle and then you can go back to that cycle of then a mini cut or a slight small deficit for x amount of weeks for an event and then you go straight back up to maintenance you don't want to spend too long in a deficit because the whole time you want to calorie deficit is the whole time you're slowing the changing of the shape because it's just a lot slower. It doesn't mean you can't change your body shape, it just means it's a lot slower in a calorie deficit than if you were at maintenance or a small surplus. But that is basically everything in a nutshell, and honestly, if you have any questions, please know my DMs are always open, whether that is Instagram. If you haven't done so already, make sure you follow me. I'm gonna pop my socials down below. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit like and subscribe and drop them in the comments down below so that I can help you as well. I am going to go and eat my roast dinner. It's half six, it's Halloween on Tuesday. So I'm gonna go have my little roast dinner and I will catch you guys in the next one. And I will see you very soon.